So for today's video, you're going to need a pellet gun, some BBs or pellets, firecrackers, and a lighter. So the pellet gun we're using today is this Chinese one I got from a hawk shop. It is fully wooden metal, and it says it's 450 feet per second. So it's pretty cheap. It was like 40 bucks, which is the one I'm using in today's video. It's a, a brake barrel spring-powered gun. I wouldn't recommend it doing this with any other more expensive gun or a gas-powered or electric pellet or airsoft gun. But that's the one we're going to be using today. And we also, of course, will need firecrackers for this experiment. Here's these two I have here just to show you guys. Basically, these are your standard issue. They're big and red. They're not large, but they're regular size. And these are the tinier ones. Now, the red ones here, I believe, are around 6 millimeter diameter, which is the same size as an airsoft BB. These are too big for a pellet gun. You want the smaller ones, and they actually fit perfectly. This is a .177 caliber pellet gun. As you can see, they fit perfectly just like that in the barrel. So we're gonna go ahead and do a baseline test using the regular brake barrel action. As you see, break it in half, pop it back in place. The eBay one has trouble sometimes. And then go ahead and shoot. And we're gonna do that and then the firecracker and see how much more powerful it is. So first things first for the baseline testing, I'm going to take one of these ball bearings. Turns out they're a little too small, so I'm going to go ahead and drop it in the lid of this tube of high temp disc brake grease. And all that allows me to do by mixing it around is adds a nice little coating to the outside so that when I put it in the barrel, it sits nicely instead of just rolling all the way through. Let's go ahead and crack it closed and do a shooting test at this little tin can. So there's the can. It's actually a pretty heavy duty soup can, so it's definitely not going to go through. It might dent it pretty good though. So I'm going to try and aim with no real sight. Here we go. Firing in three, two, one. Let's go check out the damage. Well, I stand mistaken. The lube might have helped seal it up real good. We have an entry and an exit hole. Let's try the firecracker. Alright, so now for the firecracker test, we're going to start with the BB first. So again, BB in a little bit of grease, putting it in the barrel first. I'm gonna crack it in half to make it easier to load. All right, there we go. And now using the small firecracker, it's actually lightly lubed up too to make for easy penetration. So go ahead and push it in the barrel all the way. Now unfortunately, the fuse has to be lit and then closed. So this is gonna happen very quickly. So let's go ahead with the shooting test. So there's the can set up. My gun is loaded, and just because um, this might destroy my gun, I'm going to be nice and close. But if I miss, I put up some plywood for another damage test. So basically, I'm going to light it, close the barrel and point in probably less than a second. So get ready, because here goes the shooting test. No countdown, because I'm going to be a little too focused. Alrighty, and here we go. Alright, I think I missed a little high. Here's another round loaded up, let's try again. I hit the can, let's go check it out. Alright, so there's the hole it made in the can, entry and exit. As you can see, it's very similar to the one made uh, by the spring-powered BB. Anyway, so Definitely a pretty fast gun in both circumstances, but the firecracker, even with just those small ones, were pretty powerful. Here's the shot where I missed. There's where it entered the plywood. And it didn't exit, but there's a crack where it hit. It's kind of hard to see on the camera, but it, I think, just about made it past this half-inch thick plywood. Anyway... So there's a fun little thing if you have a crappy gun or even a steel pipe laying around to try. I'm going to try and get my chronograph out here. It's in storage right now so we can do some actual chronographing to find the actual FPS. So stay tuned for that. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe for more experiments, awesome videos. Again, let me know what you want to see with the 3D printer. Of course, I'm on vacation, so there's going to be lots of cool videos coming up. And my gun survived this test, which is also good. So thank you everyone for watching, and as always, please like, comment, and subscribe.